Hi, Yogi. Welcome. It's Julia. You're tuning in to my Couch to Confident course. And today is ha, Yin Restorative and Meditation Day. So you are in for a treat and I cannot wait. If you didn't know, Yin is totally in. What is Yin Yoga? Yin is the complementary opposite to the Yang Yoga. Yang is what you basically know of yoga, vinyasa and flow and movement. In yin, we slow it down and we address different tissues of the body. So we're going to get into connective tissues. We're going to help bring a little bit of freedom, a little bit of range into our joints. And in yin yoga, we're working with the meridians in the body. So we hold poses for a long time. And the length of time is really what offers the benefit uh, of the pose. So while none of these poses will seem as extreme or as muscularly difficult as the poses in our yang practice or our flow and vinyasa practice, in this yin and restorative approach, we will be holding poses for a long time so that we can get the tremendous benefit of release, so that we can address the meridians, and today we're working on the heart line, um, and we can have that overall stress reduction that we're looking for. When you think about reducing stress, it is absolutely paramount that you incorporate stress reduction techniques anytime you're coming into a new exercise regimen or you're amping up your yoga practice, your mat practice. This is going to be the thing that encourages you to keep going and encourages you to feel really good, not only on the mat, but off the mat. Um, and it's going to help you get through some stressful times or some chaotic times so that you can meet your goals um, and you can feel really confident in any athletic activity that you do, yoga included. All right, so as we get started for our yin and restorative practice, um, it's helpful to have a few pillows. So I just grab pillows that might look like something you'd have at home. So if you don't have a yoga bolster, that's okay. You can grab a long pillow and you can also substitute maybe two couch cushions, um, throw pillows um, instead of yoga blocks. We'll use these props for a couple of the poses, but know that um, we won't be using them for every single pose, so you don't have to fiddle around with them too much. To begin, we'll find just an easy seat and start with some breathing. So allow your sit bones to root, find a comfortable position for your legs. Lengthen up through your spine and let your shoulders drape down your back. And to start, we'll bring our palms face up towards the ceiling and then unite thumb and index finger on each hand. Yana mudra, this is wisdom mudra. It's also um, a very common mudra. Mudras are just hand yoga. It's a common hand gesture for meditation. We'll take this mudra while we begin to set our breath. I'd like to introduce a pranayama practice called square breathing or four part breathing in which we will inhale, hold, exhale, hold, and all of those parts of the breath will be held for the same amount of time. So thinking like a square. So it goes like this. Inhale for the count of four, three, two, one. Now hold and retain the breath for four, three, two, one. Now exhale, four, three, two, one. One, and at the bottom of your exhale, stay empty. Hold that emptiness for four, three, two, one. Let's go again. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Hold on the empty. Again, inhale. Hold with that fullness. Exhale. Hold at the bottom. Let's take that one more time. Inhale for the count of four. Hold for the count of four. 
Exhale for the count of four. Remain empty for the count of four. Good, now take a natural breath in. Sigh your breath out. <sighs> Draw your hands to your heart into Anjali Mudra. And if it feels comfortable, allow your eyes to close. And as you allow your eyes to close, lift the skin of your heart up to the skin of your thumbs. Feel the back of your neck and the back of your skull rise up towards the ceiling. And start to notice all of the sensations around you, so maybe any noises you can hear in the room where you are, or maybe even the beat of your heart underneath your thumbs. And as we come into our heartline focused restorative practice today, I'd like to introduce a heart focused meditation. And in Sanskrit, the mantra for this meditation is. Loka, Samasta, Sukinu, Bhavantu. Loka, Samasta, Sukinu, Bhavantu. And the translation is roughly, may all beings everywhere be happy, healthy, and free. So just coming into this sensation, this mood or bhava, this mood of open-heartedness. And say in your mind's eye, may all beings, including me, be happy, healthy, and free. May all beings, including me, make sure to include yourself May all beings be happy, healthy, and free. One last time. May all beings be happy, healthy, and free. Take one more breath in. Sigh the breath out. your eyes blink open. We'll come into our first pose. So as we go through these poses, they may look very similar to their counterparts in our vinyasa world, but I may refer to them with different names. And the reason for the different names is that they have a different energy. In any of your yin or restorative poses, you don't want to grip with muscular strength. Instead, you want to look for a release and a melt. And I'll offer this to you multiple times throughout practice because we tend to forget that our job isn't to grip and hold on. Our job in this practice is to soften and let go. Bring your two smaller pillows to a line and lay a, a thicker, longer pillow on top. So maybe two throw pillows on the bottom and uh, the pillow you might sleep with on top. And then align yourself so that you're backing up to the pillows and roll down so that your spine is held by the pillows. So we come into recline butterfly. You can bring the soles of your feet together and let your knees drape out. Then draw your arms up overhead, pull your shoulder blades out from underneath you, and then widen the arms down, let them rest. So as you go through these poses today, we'll be holding them for a little bit. So it's important to observe the arrival, observe your breath, and then also observe how you transition out of poses. Notice your breath here. Let it continue to be soft. And some of the trickiest part of being in a more 
quiet or contemplative practice is that our mind wants to start to fill up with all of these things we think we should be doing. Remind yourself that you are a being that deserves happiness, healthiness, and freedom. And part of that includes the ability to rest and digest. So slow, long-held postures, steady breath stimulates our parasympathetic nervous system, our rest and digest nervous system. And on this side of our nervous system, it's where we heal and renew. It's where the body gets the signal to rest and process. So know that just by laying here and deeply breathing, you are bringing tremendous benefits into your body. Take three more breaths. Great. Use your hands to close the legs. Roll to your side, off your pillows, and just take a moment to rest. Your head can be held on your arm. If you have low back tenderness, you can always draw your knees a little bit closer into your chest. Great, now use the hand that's on the ground to press yourself up. Go slow, we're not in a rush. And come to a tabletop. You'll want probably just one of your pillows with you. You can set the other two to the side. From tabletop, I like to just find a little bit of movement in my spine. So that might just be a little cat-cow. You might also want to just roll in circles a little bit. Just find a little bit of movement. Organic shapes, stretching out just a bit. After any pose that's held for a long period of time, the body will always have a moment or wants to kind of rebound and reset. So it's important not to rush into the next really long hold. Give yourself a moment to reset everything, reset the body and your breath and even your mindset. All right. So from here, we'll move into the melting heart posture. You may know this as puppy pose. Um, In the yin and restorative practices, we call it anahatasana or the melting heart. So from here, it can be helpful to have a pillow handy just in case you're feeling a little bit tight in the shoulders. You're going to keep your hips over your knees and start to walk your hands forward as if you were going into a kneeling downward facing dog. From there you can place your forehead or chest down on the bolster. A lot of times you may want to bring your ear to your bolster. I have a little bit of room in my shoulders to play with today so I may just bring my forehead all the way down. So bring your elbows down, forehead down, and your tail will stay up over your knees. Here, gravity is doing the work. Gravity is doing the work to open the shoulders. It's also doing the work to decompress the low back. And we're addressing the heart line in this posture with a little bit of compression down into the hands, to the forearms, and that openness across the chest and into the shoulders. If you notice that over time, some more space is built into the body, you might bring your chin all the way down. But for a lot of us, that's pretty extreme and the forehead is plenty. Notice the expansion of the rib cage wide and out. And know that if at any point you start to feel any tingling or numbness in the thumbs or fingers, you're probably a little too deep into the shoulder and you may want to back up just a bit with the elbows. So even though we're not offering a bunch of muscular engagement in these types of practices, there still can be a little bit of discomfort in the joints. You want to be really judicious about whether or not you are experiencing discomfort or pain, especially because we are not engaging around a joint. We are opening up the joints. We want to nourish 
and really care for our bodies. So if it is approaching that threshold of pain, back out of the pose. We're holding these poses for a long period of time so they don't have to feel super intense from the outset. It's the time in the pose that really is making the difference, not necessarily how deep you go. Anytime your brain starts to get hooked and pulled away from your practice, come back to your breath and remind yourself that doing this practice, this slow, long-held and quiet practice, you are offering tremendous benefit of stress reduction. You're also reducing cortisol in the body, which can help you with any of your weight loss goals, your athletic goals, or if you're just feeling really stressed out in life, you are cultivating some techniques that you can use to bring more balance and more harmony into your life. Continue to breathe three more rounds. Good. Put a little weight into your elbows so you can walk yourself back up to tabletop. And again, you may just take a moment to rebound. So that might be just gentle movement side to side. You might bend the elbows, sway, let the body come back to some balance. We'll continue to open up the heart line from our belly. So come on down, extend your legs out behind you, and we'll set up for Sphinx Pose. So Sphinx Pose looks just like it sounds, the Sphinx in Egypt. You're going to bring your elbows underneath your shoulders, roll the shoulders gently back, and let your chest move forward. Because we're in a restorative approach to this pose, you can allow your belly to soften all the way down into the ground, and if you need to, you could just hang the head or put a prop underneath it. I like to simply just gaze forward, almost like you're just gazing out into the distance and focus on the breath. If at any point this becomes intense, and that happens in a yin practice, so even in restorative practices, we notice that um, things can be a little bit edgy or uncomfortable. You're always welcome to just lay your forehead down and resume when you need to. But if you're just feeling a little bit of discomfort, then breathe through it. For those that have low back tenderness, it may feel supportive to gently tuck the toes behind you and put just enough stability into the legs and the glutes that it supports the pelvis. We are creating a little bit of compression in the back right now. Compression can be really beneficial if we do it with a lot of awareness. When we compress, we're gently squeezing and applying pressure, but then when we release later on, it gives way to all of this fl fresh blood flow, more circulation, um, so a lot of awesome things will come back into that space once we release. So when we're working with things that feel a little bit more compressive, again, go to that rule of thumb. Can you breathe through it? If you can, you're probably in good shape. On the other hand, if there's any sharp shooting pain or any tingling or numbness, you may have gone a little too far and it can be good to back out just a bit. Take a couple more breaths here. Exhale, just lay your forehead down for a moment. That'll relieve the shoulders. And then press back into embryo pose. So it's similar to child's pose, but you're gonna bring your knees together. 
Place your forehead down on your yoga mat and then drape your arms to your side. When you drape your arms to your side, you're just offering the shoulder joint a different direction than it has been going from the melting heart and from the sphinx pose. It's important to offer counterbalancing shapes in the body. And right now, with your belly on your thighs, the compression is now coming into the abdomen, which can be tremendously helpful for digestion. And it also can continue to aid in the stress reduction. Breathe into the back line of the body. Breathe into the shadow side of the heart and feel the shoulder blades melt the outsides of the body. There is still plenty of room to breathe in this shape, even though the front line of your body is compressed. So because your breath has to start investigating spaciousness in your back line, it begins to push and open and stretch the body from the inside out. You may even feel the space between the back ribs opening, tension begin to relieve in the upper back. Continue to breathe. couple more times. Great. Come on up to table. If you are following along on this coursework, you're doing every single day. These quieter practices are a fantastic opportunity to remind yourself of what you're doing for your body and how good um, it is that you're taking on these challenges. Even something like doing a yin practice can be a challenge. It's not always easy to fit these things in our day. So congratulate yourself for taking the time. Come on down to your belly once more. And we'll take a pose called wishbone pose. So we're going to open up the front line of the chest. So for our wishbone pose, you'll take your right arm out from your shoulder, but gaze to your left. It's important that the arm is right at the shoulder line or maybe just a little bit below it. If you're way out in front of it, it tends to hurt the joint. So you wanna be right in line with it or maybe just a little bit lower. Gaze over to your left and then roll over the right shoulder and step the left foot behind you. It can become a little kickstand. If you're feeling exceptionally tight in your shoulder, you may want to bring some propping behind you, a pillow um, or a cushion. If your ear does not want to lay flat on the ground, you can also bring a cushion underneath your head. When we're dealing with the heart line, we're dealing with opening up in the shoulder girdle, it's important to remember that we're not just simply talking about our chest. We're talking about the chest, the back body, the shoulder, the arm, and even the hands. So it's all connected. So you might notice that this is bringing a little bit of tenderness, not just in the chest, but into the front of the shoulder and down the arm as well. If you do notice any sharper shooting pain, reduce the range of motion. Continue to breathe deeply here. If you've been following along or you do a lot of yoga, this is a pose right here that is very beneficial to counterbalance a lot of planks and chaturangas just provides a little more spaciousness to those areas that tend to get tighter tense, especially when we're doing a lot of activity where we are balanced on our hands. Take a few more breaths. Good. 
Use this next exhale to roll back to your belly and place both of your hands under your forehead for a moment to rest. Let's move on to the other side. Extend your left arm out from your shoulder, gaze to the right. And then roll over the left shoulder and step your right foot behind you. So here, again, you want your ear to rest on the ground. And you want to feel stable. So if you need to bring a pillow behind you for a little support, do so. It's important also that your hands have the palms to the ground as opposed to flipping or turning in a weird direction. Yin practices can be so restorative for the body, but they can be challenging for the mind. We tend to get carried away with thoughts of being super duper productive or get carried away with thoughts of being a little bit anxious. And these quieter practices ask us to prioritize being present over being productive. And we tend to find that there's so much more to gain when we can really slow down and breathe and be in the present moment. This concept of taking your time and slowing down is not something that's natural to you, that's okay. I know for me, I was always drawn to really fast, vigorous practices, but when I found the beauty of yin, uh, everything changed. Not only did I find a little more peace of mind, I actually saw that my performance, my physical performance in other athletic activities um, increased uh, because I was able to restore my body more quickly. Next exhale, roll back to your belly. Place your hands underneath your forehead and rest. Good. From this pose, just flip over onto your back. The last pose we'll take is just to counterbalance our spine after some of this spinal extension we found, especially in our middle and upper backs, we'll just rotate just a bit in twisted roots. So twisted roots looks like eagle in the legs and supine twist in the torso and arms. Cross your right leg over your left, scooch your hips over to the right, and then drop your knees and open your heart up to the ceiling. If you need a little bit more room, the twist feels too tight, you can uncross the bottom ankle or extend your right arm over up by your ear. There's no need to push or tug or pull in this twist. Let gravity do its job. If you feel like your knees are kind of hanging out in space, you can always slide a bolster or pillow underneath your knee. And if for any reason crossing the legs like the eagle is causing you low back pain, you can simply stack the knees and come into a traditional supine twist. I find it nice to keep the heart line idea in this pose by taking cactus arms. You can just bend at the elbows and let the backs of the hands touch, touch the ground. and more 
more I'm seeing my clients that would come to me for a lot of athletic type of goals are starting to get curious about practices like this meditation and restorative yoga. We want to know why and how these practices are adding so much to recovery, to stress reduction. They want to know how do I put it into practice in my own regimen. And it's as simple as this, just taking the time to make it a priority. Good. Come back to the middle. Let's take the other side. Cross the left leg over the right. Scoot your hips to the left and drop your knees to the right. So again, if you notice that the floor feels a little bit far, you can always pull a bolster underneath your knees for a little more support. And if you feel a little bit too tight in the twist in your middle back, you can extend the left arm up by your ear. Once you find a place where you feel grounded, start to soften the breath, check in to see if any muscles are gripping, and ask them to relax. When you're doing a home practice, you might be watching this video at home or in your office. It's so easy to allow your brain to get distracted with to-do lists or any of the number of things that may be on your agenda. If you notice that pull of distraction, just come back to the sound of your own breath. Nothing is more important than your health and well-being. So this time you're taking for you is tremendously important. It will make you more vital, more able, more well-equipped to do all of the other things your life asks you to. Great, let's come back to the middle. Recenter your hips, give your low back a moment to acclimate to being long on the ground. Then draw your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little squeeze as you pull your thigh bones down into the abdomen and chest. Then take your forehead up to meet your knees. Breathe in. And then your exhale. Come out into Shavasana. It can be really nice to take your pillow and slide it underneath your knees. This will just help your low back feel a little more supported. Let your toes flop out in whatever direction they need to. Untuck your shoulder blades from underneath you and turn your palms up towards the ceiling. Bring your eyes to close and soften your breath. This is a great opportunity here in Shavasana if you're mind starts to drift away to come back to the mantra that we started this practice with. Loka samasta sukhinu bhavantu. May all beings, and that includes you, be happy, healthy, free. So say to yourself, say to yourself, may all beings, including me, be happy, be healthy, Letting your mind, your mantra, and your physical practice all embody the same mood, the same idea of loving kindness, gentleness, relieving stress, promoting health and well being. If you have the time today, I encourage you to take five or ten minutes in Shavasana this is all the time you have, then start to wake up the body gently with small movements in the toes and fingers. Roll your wrists and roll your ankles. Stretch yourself out and then come on to your side. Your knees can draw up in towards your chest and lay your head in your arm. 
and use the hand that's on the ground. Push yourself up to a comfortable seat. Take your hands to your heart and then lift your heart up to your thumbs. And feel all that space you've created for your chest, for your shoulders, for your heart line, for your breath, and most importantly, for your mind today. Thank you so much for tuning in to this video. I hope you're enjoying this entire Couch to Confident course. I made it from my heart to yours. If you tune in tomorrow, we're going to continue on our journey of getting really strong in our body and strong in our mind. And until then, namaste. We at Wellness Plus specialize in all things health and wellness ranging from yoga and fitness to massage and ASMR. Whether you are looking to target specific areas of tension or want to enhance your general self-care routine, we provide the tools you need to feel better, look better, and live better. We have courses for every level, whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned pro. Our courses provide a wide range in difficulty to accommodate your evolving flow. Wellness Plus is available on Amazon, which you can stream from your home on your phone, tablet, or TV. Join Wellness Plus today and get your first seven days free.